Where would you like to fly? To where the East begins or to the sophistication of Europe? To sand or snow? The edge of the desert or the blue sea? To French cuisine at its finest or Arak Meze in a fishing village? Castles, casinos, mosques, mountains, ski slopes, belly dancers, five-star hotels or adobe huts? The swinging or the somnolent? Unfasten your seat belts. This plane brings you to them all. All those things and more in one country 120 miles long by 35 wide. The welcome mat of the Middle East, the Lebanon. Beirut, capital of the Lebanon, where a quarter of the people live, is one of the great crossroads of the world. The country was under French mandate from the end of World War I to the end of World War II. It absorbed the French genius for gracious living, gave it an Arab flavor, and Beirut became a kind of Arabian Nights Paris. Lebanese learned a lot from the French, not to mention the Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, Turks, British, Americans and others. But they had no need to learn civilization. They had always been civilized, preferring trade to war and education to ignorance. The Phoenicians, who sailed as far as Britain long before the Romans and traded for tin with the skin-clad natives, were the ancestors of these energetic people. Their traders crop up in the Old Testament and in Homer, and they have never gone out of business. Sidon, perhaps, has been in business longest of all. The Crusaders, who built the castle which dominates the harbour, were not the only ones to attack Sidon. Persians burned it. Alexander the Great occupied it. Queen Victoria's navy bombarded it. Each time, Sidon cleared up the mess and carried on. Tyre, that other target of the Hebrew prophet's wrath, has more naked history in a few acres than almost any city on earth. Phoenician, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, Byzantine and Arab civilizations have been lovingly laid bare to the Mediterranean sun. Even the dead seem friendly to the life around them. If the Lebanon's coastal towns have survived for thousands of years in their biblical land flowing with milk and honey, it's thanks to the tall mountains at their backs, defending them from landward surprise and supplying them with water. Tough but hospitable, the mountain folk go their own way. Remind them that the ravenous goat was made illegal in the Lebanon a few years ago, and they'll say, tell that to the goats. Monks used to live in those holes in the rocks. When Solomon asked Hiram of Tyre for cedar to build his temple, Hiram wrote back, We will cut wood out of Lebanon as much as thou shalt need. 
Experts say some of these cedars may have been a thousand years old even then. Favorite Lebanese meal is the meze, a variety of small dishes from which you pick and choose. Arak, a Middle Eastern cousin to Perno, is the traditional drink to have with it. A regional delicacy is tunny or mullet roe, pickled in brine and vinegar. And if that's not to your taste, no one's offended. With meze, you take what you like and you leave what you don't. The same could be said of the Lebanon. You could have a dozen different holidays and never repeat yourself. But one place everyone goes to is Baalbek, the city of the sun god. Nobody knows how old it is, but the glory which remains, crowned by the temple of Jupiter, dates from Roman times and took more than three centuries to build. Baalbek is not just a splendid ruin. Every year, from July to mid-September, it's the setting for the International Baalbek Festival, started in 1955 by a group of Lebanese and French enthusiasts. Against this magnificent background, it presents drama, music and dancing from many cultures, including, of course, that of the Lebanon itself. Lebanese art reflects today as well as yesterday. Modern sculptor Michel Babou at work in his Rakana village studio. Betadine, a model of Middle Eastern architecture. A palace built early in the 19th century by Emir Becker, who was absolute ruler of the Lebanon for more than 50 years. This looks European. It's only the East getting its own back. For Western horse racing was founded on Arab bloodstock. Beirut Racecourse has meetings every Sunday and on most holidays. For their time, the Phoenicians knew everything there was to know about the sea. But this had to wait for the internal combustion engine. Many Beirut hotels, large and small, are right on the seafront and have an international reputation with gourmets and sun worshippers alike. The Lebanon's coast is ideal for boats, whether sail or power, from the rich man's yacht to the tiny dinghy. The weather favours the sailor for most of the year and there's always a harbour, ancient or modern, within comfortable reach or at least a bay. Dinghy racing is fairly new here, but already there are clubs up and down the coast.
Everywhere in the Lebanon, there is choice. Even the golf club offers an escape for members of the family who don't like golf. A simple source of power for pumping seawater and plenty of sun to evaporate it is all you need to make salt. We are at Tripoli, a port much younger than Tyre or Sidon, having been founded a mere 2,700 years ago. Oldest of them all is Byblos. In fact, it's one of the oldest continuously inhabited towns in the world. 2,000 years and more before Christ, it overshadowed Tyre and Sidon. Today, it's a sleepy village of about a thousand people, serving excellent seafood. Wherever in the Lebanon you have spent the day, you can return to Beirut when the sun sets. And most visitors do just that. For at nightfall, this unique blend of Montmartre and Harun al-Rashid this neon-lit Aladdin's cave, this marriage of French gaiety with Arab magic, comes truly into its own. to gamble or dance, dine or drink, join in or just watch, or all of them in turn. Be in Beirut when the lights go up, but don't expect to be early to bed. <laughs> 